We're looking at page one of the fall 2011 exam one. A medical study is going to be conducted and we have some data being collected. We're asked first to decide whether these data being collected are going to be on the categorical scale or the quantitative scale. The first variable is smoker, yes or no. Since we're recording an outcome that's either yes or no, a name, this is a categorical response. And then body temperature is going to be recorded, but that's in degrees Fahrenheit. So that's on a numerical scale, and this is then quantitative. Another variable being recorded on the quantitative scale is blood pressure. We have blood pressure for subjects in the study, referred to study one, and they're being compared to the results of another similar study, those subjects that were in study two. So we have side-by-side -side box plots that are being provided. And we're asked to complete a couple sentences based on what we're seeing from the data displayed in these box plots. We first are supposed to look at a person in study one and asked to say the person with the lowest blood pressure, the lowest blood pressure in study one, has a blood pressure of what amount? So study one, focusing on that set of data first, we do see this observation right here, this dot or extra point plotted, which is in a box plot, an outlier being identified with a certain criteria, but it's still an observation of a person in that study. It's still part of the data set. And that lowest value looks to be about, hmm, about 60. So that will be our response we put in here. And then completing a sentence about people in study two. 75% of the participants in study two had a blood pressure of a certain amount or higher higher than a certain amount. All right, so 75% usually is the key that it's going to be either Q1 or Q3, because each of those has a 25% and 75% going along with it. It's just a matter of which direction you're going. We want to find the value, such that if we looked at all those that had a blood pressure higher than that, we would get about 75% of the people there. So if we try Q1 and look at all the people who have a blood pressure higher than that, we do indeed get 75% of the people here. So Q1 is our answer, and Q1 looks to be about, at that level, about 100. This is also why it's helpful to draw on your exam and show us a little bit about how you're reading values off, so that if your value was read off to be 99, we would still be accepting that. And then finally, which numerical quantity represented by the box plot completes our sentence here about the median? The median for blood pressures in study one, median for study one, is roughly equal to what quantity for the blood pressures in study two? All right, that median though looks like it's about Q3 for study two. And then the QQ plot we see in study two looks to be somewhat symmetric. A QQ plot, excuse me, a box plot in study two shows to be somewhat symmetric and a QQ plot then was made of this data and shown here. Does a normal distribution appear to be a reasonable model for our blood pressures for those in study two? We're asked to answer yes or no and give some explanation. So if we recall with QQ plots, we're looking at the observed data, plotting them in the order, smallest to largest, against what we would expect those values to be if a bell curve model, a normal distribution, really did hold. And things should be matching up fairly well along that reference line if the model does a reasonable job. So here we're seeing the points fall. There's some fluctuation, but nothing systematic. So we would say yes, and our reasoning is simply that these points the points do seem to follow that 45 degree line. The points do follow approximately the straight line with the positive slope. Indicating that the normal model seems to be reasonable. You know, there's a couple points here on the end that are falling off a little bit. So you could mention those as potential outliers, but they're not drastically so. The model actually does look to be quite good here.